next thing we'll be doing is talking about creating a contact sheet and an 8x10 print for sending to a type C chromogenic service bureau like Oscars Photo Lab, Costco, Dickerman Prints, um, Walgreens, CVS. Uh, those are all kind of amateur service bureaus. Some of the more professional service bureaus in town include Lightwaves, Dickerman's, PhotoWorks. They're more costly, but they specialize in quality control and customer service, and you get more consistent results. Um, so the main thing is to weigh quality, cost, and proximity as to what's convenient for you um, where you do your printing. So this workflow is for printing to a chemically-based process where lasers uh, expose onto photo paper, and then the photo paper goes through chemistry. It's called RA4 chemistry, and that's called type C or chromogenic printing. It's, it's a different workflow than if you were going to print to your inkjet printer. Is anybody printing to an inkjet printer? If you are, then I'll have to go over that workflow with you. It's different. So the goal or the objective by the end of the lab today is to make a contact sheet. Remember that this is a five by eight row contact sheet. We're actually going to be making a four column by five row contact sheet. Uh, and I'll be demonstrating that and also to fit a full frame image onto an 8 by 10 sheet of paper with your metadata exposure information underneath. So these are the two outcomes that we want from this lab for you. You can do black and white or color, it doesn't matter. The video and the lessons for this lab are stored on the server and it's called Lab 4, Contact Sheet and 8 by 10. So notice that I'll put some movies in here for you. Um, I'll put uh, the instructions. Make sure to look at the instructions here. And um, some student samples for you to look at. Okay? So let's take a look at the examples. The first thing we're going to do is to create, um, this says make two contact sheets and two 8x10s. I think tonight we only have time for one of each, so that'll be fine. So in the library mode, the first thing I'm going to do is to select the pictures I want for the contact sheet. Um, and here's a hint that command clicking uh, selects more than one image. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Lightroom, go back into my library module, and I'm going to select all the images that I want to bring over to make a contact sheet. So for the, the 8 by 10 image and the contact sheet images, I'm going to be working in the print module. All of my folders don't migrate over to the print module, only pictures I select or put into a collection. So I need you to make uh, a collection of at least 20 pictures or select at least 20 pictures. So here I have five. So I'll select these four rows. Selecting these four rows. So I clicked on the first one and I shift clicked on the last one. You can then make a collection if you want to called for contact sheet. And this says include the selected photos. And now I have a collection of 20 images. Um, I also have them selected and they're showing up in my film strip. So as long as they're showing up in your film strip, once you migrate to the print module, all of those images should go with you. And you need 20 images for this assignment. The next thing that we're going to do is um, in the print module, choose the 4x5 contact sheet template from the template browser. Okay. And I'm going to choose 4x5 contact sheet. And notice that they fit perfectly. If you accidentally have one too many uh, images on there, I'll go back and just add an extra one to show you an example. Select all my pictures here. I'll just add a few more to this collection. Say I have two too many. And I go over to the print module. Notice that now I have, select, make sure I select them all. Notice that now I have two pages worth of contact sheets, and there's only two on the next page. So what I'm aiming for is to make only one page of contact sheets. So I can apple click to remove 
two pictures, and notice now it's just one page. So I Apple clicked down at the bottom here to remove two images, to deselect two images from the film strip. So now I have exactly 20. So um, I want the 4 by 5 contact sheet. That's so that I have a total of 20 images. Um, the 5 by 8 contact sheet is just too small to evaluate. So we want to make sure we choose the 4 by 5. The next thing I'm going to do is um, choose, double check my paper size from the page setup button. Um, and I'm going to set up a page, an 8 by 10 custom page size. Because normally when we print, we don't use 8 by 10. So we need to set this up as a custom size. So I'm going to go back to Lightroom. I'm going to choose Page Setup. And from this drop down, notice that photo sizes aren't an option. So I'm going to choose Manage Custom Size. And I'm going to hit the plus sign here and name this 8 by 10. What's my width going to be? 8. What's my height going to be? 10. 8 by 10. Because Walgreens prints 8 by 10, not 8 by 12. So we're going to fit our image on an 8 by 10 sheet. If you had the option of printing 8 by 12, you definitely could set up an 8 by 12. Most uh, amateur service bureaus don't offer the 8 by 12 size. You'll have to check to see if they do, OK? So they kind of force us to print them on an 8 by 10 sheet. Then I can save this as my default so that this is always here if I want. And I'm going to say OK. Notice how that this changed. It stretched the size of the paper a little bit um, because now it's an 8 by 10. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure in my image settings that rotate to fit is selected here. And what this does is it makes sure it makes sure that if you have any odd sized images, it rotates them so that they fit on the contact sheet. This is a common mistake. Students choose zoom to fill. Well, you can't see the composition if you choose zoom to fill. And if you choose repeat one photo per page, then you have 20 pages of one photo on every page. So we don't want that either. We just want the rotate the, to fit selected. Under the layout, Here's where you can adjust the margins a little bit. So if you wanted to add a little bit more left-hand margin, if you wanted to put a three-hole punch in there and put it in your notebook, you could. That's optional. Uh, we do want to keep the 4 by 5 grid. But here it shows you that each cell is approximately 1.6 by 1.6 amount of space. If I uncheck Keep Square, sometimes they move around a little bit. So this is the default is generally good under Layout, unless you wanted to do a little bit of a space here, or you wanted to add a little bit more space on the bottom to put your name. I'll show you how to put your name on it. Guide marks, we can see um, that's not going to print, though. That just gives us a visual of how big things are, in case you're wondering. On the page, I can add what's called an identity plate. The default is to put it right in the middle. I'm going to click on it and kind of put it down at the bottom. I'm going to make it smaller. Size. I want to make it smaller. I just want to put it down at the very bottom. Um, you can change the color, override color. I want to change it black. And then you can edit it to type in your name if you want. The keyboard shortcut for the copyright symbol is Option G on a Mac. And I can say OK. And it's, it's small, but it's down there, OK? And so it's, uh, you can stretch it out if you want, make it a little bigger. Woo. And you can change the opacity if you just kind of want to make it a light, lighter color. So that's what's called the identity plate. If you have a logo, you can also choose to use a graphical identity. So you could import um, a file that has your logo on it and add that to your prints if you wanted to instead. This allows you to render it behind and render it on every image. That means every single little image. I don't need that. But this is handy when it comes to larger pictures. Watermarking means that on every picture, it can put your copyright information over the top 
Um, I'll go over that in the next lesson, but we don't want to do watermarking. Page numbers can be nice if you have more than one page. There's a page number down at the bottom here. But what I do want you to add for sure, all these things are optional, but what I, what's not optional is the photo information. I want you to add your exposure information under each thumbnail. If you're shooting film, this won't show up. You could choose something else, like um, the uh, file name, for example, might work. Um, but the exposure information is handy so that your colleagues know what exposure information you used. And here's how you choose the font size if you need something a little bigger or a little smaller. Okay. So take your time going through the page options because they're pretty fun. Now this is where it gets tricky. We're actually going to print to a JPEG file and we're going to deliver this JPEG file. We're going to save it on our hard drive and deliver it to a service bureau. Some service bureaus have websites that you can upload on and then go in and pick up the file. Walgreens does, Costco does. Um, we're going to leave draft mode printing on, that's fine. It doesn't really matter because it's a JPEG file, okay? Custom file dimensions, let's leave this checked, make sure it says 8 by 10, okay? We already set it up in the page setup. Uh, page setup is optional, make sure this is check marked. JPEG file quality, anywhere from 80 to 100. If you're sending it over the internet to a service bureau, I would um, downgrade to 80 because it will cut the file size in half and be much quicker. If you're walking in to a service bureau, you can leave it at 100. This should say 300. Okay. Profile. Most service bureaus work with a profile of sRGB. If you're printing to Walgreens, sRGB is the right profile. If you're going to Lightwaves, sRGB. If you're going to PhotoWorks, sRGB. If you're going to Costco, see me and I'll show you how to download the profile for Costco and embed it, okay? It requires a special website. Otherwise, if you uh, are not sure of the profile, sRGB, it's the smallest color space, but it generally is used for print. And that's it. Then we're going to say print to file to get the file out of our computer. I'm going to put it in my to print folder in my file structure. I'm going to name it um, contact sheet one. Uh, I'm going to call it, uh, I'm sorry, lab four contact sheet, my name. Um, and I'd put it in the to print file if I was taking it into a service bureau. This is where I would store all my images to be printed. Um, but for this one, I'm going to save it to the desktop because I'm going to drop this in the server. So there's, there it's crunching, it's resizing all the images. You see that? And it's saving this 8 by 10 sheet to the desktop. So that's the first one, and here it is. Let's open it in preview and take a look at it. So that's the first how to make a contact sheet. The second part of this lab is how to fit an image on an 8 by 10 sheet of paper and keep it full frame. So the first step is um, choosing one image to print. So I'm going to deselect, I'm going to select none and just select one image. And instead of the contact sheet template, I want to choose the maximum size template or the fine art, uh, actually maximum size. There is a template here called 8x10. If I scroll up, I'll show it to you. But look at the difference. Here's my full frame image. Here's my 8x10 image. You see how it's cropping it for me? I don't want that, OK? I want the maximum size. So use the maximum size template, OK? I'm going to go ahead and close that. Then over here, single image is right. Under image settings, rotate to fit is fine. Uh, this matters more with uh, contact sheet images. Under layout, I, I want a little more border on the top and bottom. So here's where you would manipulate that. You could 
move it around a little bit. You can add a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. Okay? Just so it's nice and centered and you've got a little border around each size. The cell size, so my image is actually, uh, the whole cell size is eight by nine and a half, but my image is less than that. So cell size refers to the canvas or the cell, okay? Um, the guides, I could turn these on. So you could see that my image is 6.3 by nine and a half, okay? Take that off. Page, again, if I wanted to put my identity plate, I could. Um, you can also rotate the identity plate here if you want to put it up here. I like mine to be small, you know, kind of unnoticeable. And put your whole name. This pulls your username off your computer. That's why it says that. So option G, my name. I want to put it just in a 12-point font. I think it's plenty big. And say OK. Uh, and I want to change it to black there. So there's my name. OK. And watermarking. Let's just see what watermarking is. Edit the watermarks. Watermarking means you can put a logo or a piece of text over the top of your image. It's different than an identity plate. Um, it shows up on every picture. You can put it in different places. So, so, so I can say uh, EG watermark. And it shows up on every picture. Obviously, we don't want to see that for class. But if you were outputting to a website or delivering proofs to a client, you might want to put some kind of a watermark on there. Generally, the watermark is opaque like that. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off. But I do get the question, how do I watermark? Page options, if you want crop marks, if you turn crop marks on, they will show up. Page info, this is kind of cool. This tells you the kind of profile, the printer profile and the printer that you're going to and the amount of sharpening that you have. So that's more useful for inkjet printing. I'm going to turn it off. Photo info, what kind of photo info do I want? Exposure info, right? For class, I want exposure info. This is good from how it was set up before, right? Because I already had this stuff set up before. Now what I can do is under here, under the templates, I can save this as a template so that I don't have to go through all these settings every time. So today I want you to save these as, both of those as templates. So this is going to be EG 8 by 10 template. And that shows up right here in your user templates. So if I choose another image to print, like this one, I can choose this and it automatically sizes it with the borders I like, puts my name on it, I'm going to move that over there puts my exposure information at the bottom. Okay, I have check marked custom 8 by 10. I'm going to choose print to file. And on my, I would save it to my hard drive to take into the lab to get printed as, um, you know, assignment 2, or I guess you guys are on assignment 3. What are you working on? Which assignment? Lightest subject, we'll just call it lightest subject, okay? And then choose save, and it would save it onto my hard drive. But for today, I'm going to save it onto the desktop. You can see that it's um, sizing the image, saving it as a JPEG. So your workflow from here on out should be to go from your library. Uh, I understand you're working in black on black and white images, so import the images to your library, go to the develop module, work with the black and white mixer, work with the histogram, okay? Then go over to the print module, save, print a file as a JPEG, take that JPEG to the service bureau, and that's what you're going to hand into class. So everybody should have their name, their exposure information, and a border around their image. When you're done with the lab, you're going to take these uh, two that we did, this one, OK? 
Okay, and um, this one's going to be called Lab 5, 8 by 10. Your name. And put those into the Dropbox. And they should be right here. Okay, let's give it a shot, see how we do.